Welcome to the second part of this lecture. Uh, now I have this cash flow diagram. I know that the initial investment is $10,000. I have annual uh, revenues of 5,310. We have annual expenses of 3,000 and we have the salvage value of $2,000. Now I want to show you how do we get the equivalence of any of these amounts found in this cash flow diagram, either in the present or in the future. I'm going to introduce to you the concept of equivalence. Now, in order to do that, first we have to begin with the notations that we use. I, small i, represents the effective interest rate per period and the number of compounding or number of interest periods. P is the present value of the money. This is the equivalent value in the present. F will be the future value, future equivalent. Uh, in the future. A, uh, it's going to represent the annuity or the uniform series uh, of payments occurring every period. So these are the notations that we will be using. Let's begin with the first example. Uh, suppose here uh, we deposited $1,000 okay, for three years and I'm going to earn 6% interest compounded annually. So what will be the value by the end of the first year? This is the, the $1,000 and uh, I will multiply it by the 6% interest rate. So by the end of the first year, I have $1,060 in my bank account. Now, by uh, the beginning of the second year, this is the original amount of money. It's found in my bank account. I'm going to earn 6% over this amount. So what will be uh, the final amount by the end of the second year? It's going to be the 1,123. Now, at the beginning of the third year, this is the new amount found in my bank account. I'm going to again earn 6%. So uh, the final amount by the end of the third year is 1,191. Okay, so you began with an amount of $1,000, earning 6%. After three years, you will be getting this amount. Now, what if I have 20 periods? Should I continue doing this step by step? No, we have proposed an equation to do uh, all these steps in a single step. So I want to get the future value, knowing the present value, the $1,000 that I have, Multiply it by 1 plus i, the interest rate per period, and uh, it's uh, to the power n. n is the number of periods. So, if I want to calculate the future value right away, I will say f equals 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.06, which is the 6%. So it's going to be 1.06 to the power 3 because the number of periods is 3. So by multiplying this value, I will get the same amount. So if you want to get the future value of any payment you have in the present, you would use this equation. Now, what if I want to get the present value of any future value by using the same equation, f equals p into 1 plus i to the power n, p here equals to f over 1 plus i to the power n. So as if I'm saying p equals f into 1 plus i to the power minus n. So this is the equation that we will be using to get the present value of a single amount. Now, in this equation, f equals p into 1 plus i to the power, and this part can be replaced with this factor. Okay, p here is the same. However, this part here is replaced by this factor. This factor is also known as the single payment compound amount factor. How do I spell it? When I open the bracket here, and if f comes first, then I will say this factor is the f knowing p or f given p. This means that I'm calculating f knowing the present value of this single amount. In the same way, if I want to calculate p, this is the equation, p equals f into 1 plus i to the power minus n. Again, this part can be replaced with the factor of p knowing f i n. Okay, here, when I open the bracket and begin with P, this means that I want to calculate P given F or P knowing F.
Let's see this exercise. Assume you plan to buy a new car in five years. So you are not buying the car now, you are buying it after five years and you think it will cost $20,000 at that time. So the cost after five years is $20,000, so this is the future value. What amount must you invest today? So I'm asking for the present value today. In order to accumulate $20,000 in five years, if you can earn 8% interest compounded annually. So you have to invest a certain amount today you will be earning eight percent okay and the amount will accumulate to become twenty thousand dollars what is this amount so here i'm calculating the present value this is the given i can use the equation p equals f into one plus i to the power minus n i just substitute for the values i know that uh, the future value is going to be twenty thousand dollars and i know that the interest is eight percent so it is 0 0.08 so f equals one plus 0 0.08 to the power minus five which is uh, the number of periods okay it will be thirteen thousand six hundred twelve so i must invest today this amount in my bank account and earn eight percent in order to accumulate uh, a future value of $20,000 after five years. But what if I want to use the second uh, part using the factor, not the equation? We said that uh, uh, this is equivalent to the equation, so I can use the factor instead. So it will be P equals F into P knowing F I N. Let's see if, if it's going to generate the same answer. Uh, but I just want you to make sure that you're writing this factor in the correct way. I'm getting P knowing F. So when I open the bracket, you will have to write this factor. We write uh, P at first because I'm calculating P knowing F. 8% and 5. So I want to calculate the value of this factor and we get it from tables of interest and I just uh, get it from the table and multiply it by the value of f that I have let's have a look at the table of interests here this is a table uh, for eight percent okay so at each interest rate we have a specific table so we will have to get the table related to eight percent this is the first thing that you'll have to make sure uh, about that this is the correct uh, table and you are using the correct interest rate now here now here you will see that I'm still working with single payments I want uh, to get the value from the table where should I look at first we'll begin by looking at the single payments later on we will learn how to get the uniform payments the gradients and so on here this is n the number of years Okay, and I have here two columns related to the single payment. Here, if I want to find F given P, so this is the factor F knowing P. These are the numbers related to this factor. And here, this column is related to finding P given F. And these are the values related to this factor. Now, since here I want to find P knowing F, I'll be looking at this column. Okay, now I will, when I look at this column, I need to find the intersection between this column and the number of years that I have. I have five years, so I will be looking horizontally here at n equals to five. It will intersect this column at this value. So this is the value that I will be getting from uh, the table of interest. Now I just uh, need to multiply it by the future value. So here P equals F, the future value is $20,000, times the value that I got from the table related to this factor. I just multiply it and you see that you got the same amount. So here I'm presenting two methods to calculate um, the equivalence of any single amount in the present. You can use the table of interest or we can use uh, the equation. So uh, if you want to solve for other values, suppose you want to get i or you want to get n, you will be using the equation. You will have uh, four variables and you already know three of them. So the fourth one can be determined easily. 
Let's look at this example here. What if I told you to determine the value of F knowing P at 8.3%? Okay, I don't have this interest rate in my tables. I have a table for 8%, I have a table for 9%, but I don't have uh, any table for uh, decimals, 8.3 and so on. What do I do in this case? The easiest method to get the exact value of this factor is using the equation. So you write the formula F equals P into 1 plus I to the power N. So you will write the value of I no matter what is the value of I. Even if it has some decimal points, you write it as it is and you can get the future value. Of course, you'll have to multiply it here by uh, the present value. But I'm just here uh, looking at uh, the factor here itself. Okay, so the value of the factor, uh, I can get it from the equation. We have another method for calculating the value of the factor, which is by using interpolation. I can go to the table of interest of 8% and get the value of the factor, only the factor, okay, this factor. And go to the table of 9%, get the value of the factor. And this uh, is a value in between. So I use the interpolation method to get the exact value of the factor for the 8.3%. Now, uh, how do I do it? You can say that x equals to the 2.1589 plus the 8.3 minus 8 over the 9 minus the 8 multiplied by the 2.3674 minus the 215, you will get the value of x. So you see that this method gave me a value of 2.2215 and this method gave me a 2.2197. So we have an absolute error of 0.08%, which is uh, fine. Now let's look at another example. Here we have an investor who has an option to purchase uh, a land that will worth $10,000 in six years. So this is what, this is your future value. If the value of the land increases at 8% each year, this is your interest rate. How much should the investor be willing to pay now for this property? Now you can use uh, the equation alone to get uh, the value of a P, or you can use uh, this table of interests. Both will give you the same answer. I'm going to use uh, the table. So I'm calculating P. So the equation is P equals F into the factor of P knowing F, 8% 6. You have to make sure that you're writing this factor in the correct way. I want to find P knowing F. So this factor has to be P knowing F. Because if you write it in the opposite way, F knowing P, you'll be looking at this column. However, I'm interested in the values that will get out of this column. So I know that the future value is $10,000 and I need to get the value of the P knowing F at 8% 6. This is the 8% table. And this is the column related to the P knowing F. And I'm uh, going to look at the intersection of this column with n equals to 6. So the value here is 0 0.6302 multiplied by $10,000. So this is the amount that you need to invest today in order to accumulate the amount of $10,000 after 6 years. Let's look at this example. Here I want to turn $500 into $1,000 over a period of 10 years. At what interest rate would we have to invest in? So here I is the missing. Uh, you write the given here, P equals 500, F equals 1,000, N equals to 10, and we need to calculate I. So you can use uh, the equation of F equals P into F knowing P I N, or you can uh, use the equation related to P equals F into P knowing F I N. It's going to gener generate the same answer. So I substitute the values in this equation, 1,000 equals to 500 into 1 plus i to the power n. Uh, divide the 1,000 by this 500, it will give you 2. Uh, this part remains the same. 2 equals 1 plus i to the power 10. By simple calculation, you will get the value of i as 0 0.071, but I want uh, to change it into an interest. 
So I is 7.1%. Another example, how long would it take for $500 invested today at 15% interest rate to be worth $1,000? So I know that P equals 500 and F is uh, $1,000 and the interest rate is 15%. Here I want to calculate N. You see, you can calculate any of the missing values as long as you have three known values. The fourth can be calculated easily. Here I want to use the table. Uh, I know that F equals P into F knowing P 15%. This is the table related to 15%. Substitute for the values. 1000 equals to 500 into F knowing P I N. 2 equals to this factor. So I want to look at uh, this factor and see where is it close to the value of 2. So I'll be looking at the column related to F knowing P. This is the F knowing P. You see that the value begins with 1.1, 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, 2.0, .1 and 2.33. So I know that uh, the value is around year 5 or year 6. You see that this is the closest value to 2. So you say N equals to 5. Or uh, if you want to... Uh, to be more exact, we can take these values, get an interpolation to get the exact value. But uh, usually I will not ask you to do that. I will tell you what is the closest answer. So you just say it is 5. So we need 5 years. Uh, so uh, this was uh, the end of this lecture. Uh, I introduced you to uh, the interests and the concept of equivalence how to get the equivalence of any single amount in the future or in the present thank you